to our model home that Jason and I have been working very hard on designing. It's so far behind, but it's coming into completion. So I'm going to go over there and check on a style of grout that we wanted for the fireplace stone. So you guys will get a little view of what's going on over at uh, some of our other projects that have to do with the home building company. Well, we are here and I met Mike over here, my father-in-law. Joseph Scott Homes Builders. Look how awesome this is looking. The siding colors are pretty, but they look even better now that the stone's going up. So we're walking through the garage. Oh wow, we're really coming along in here. The kitchen's in. Yes, it's white cabinets again, but it's a whole new look that we're doing this year. All right, what's the problems? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, initially, this was supposed to be here. Yeah. But it comes out to here. Ooh. I almost think here. put it right here so it's easy and accessible with the microwave. Straight in. Straight in. That, that was my thought. Yeah. Was, it's more move, functional. I gotta move this somewhere. And I just think it's nice to have a built-in for the microwave here. And that way it'd be more of like a kitchen extension. Oh yeah, everything's nice in here. Oh wow, look at those cabinets with the flooring. It's looking good. So I'm assuming this is the grout area we're taking a look at. But maybe on the pieces that are like inside more, like in a little bit more, maybe just grout it over just a little bit. Okay. You know, just to kind of bring through more of the grout color because I like how the grout kind of lightens it up a little bit. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Yep, did you want more added towards the edges? Yeah. Um, I like how some you're, pieces you're kind right. of black out, so some keep blacked out, but then, you know, maybe in some areas just kind of wipe it over a little bit. Okay. Ooh, here's the small little pocket office. We are able to fit a pocket office, and it's got a beautiful cabinet in here. And we were able to also fit a beautiful window in here. So you have a lot of natural light. And then you got a full view out then into the living space. And what I really love is this double sliding door. This is the custom trim color. Wow, it looks like a whole nother shade darker than what we chose, but it is gorgeous. It's a really pretty color. So on the camera, it shows it warmer than it actually is in person. It has more of a neutral tone to it, so it's gonna be beautiful with all of the selections. We have three weeks to get it done. I know. Three weeks left to get it done, so a lot is, is happening. So, so the master. gonna be on you. <laughs> the master. Wow, look at these floors. Oh my goodness, this is awesome. And no, that's not the color the shower is gonna be. <laughs> Just Not. wait and see. <laughs> I know green's it's the end color, screen. but. <laughs> These guys are working hard on the fireplace, making it look good. We're giving it a little, little bit of that old world look. So Mike, do you think we'll be done for the parade? By the skin of our teeth. <laughs> and that's a cool buffet over there, in case you guys are wondering. How many square feet is this home again, Mike? 2262. So for a home that's 2262 square feet, we fit a lot in here. Because we even have a beautiful buffet where the dining room table will be in there. That's so great for entertaining and just for having extra space if you're not an entertainer. And then over here we have a charging station and craft center. So you can do whatever you need this extra space for. So a lot of extra cabinetry and just a whole nother space for the kids or for your guests. All right, so I'm looking at the blueprint for the mudroom cabinet, which is our drop zone. That's where you can hang your coats and everything like that. And on here, there's a few mistakes. It says that there has to be a granite seat, but I don't want granite on the seat. So this is gonna be all wood, all wood. Okay, the overall design, the rest of it's perfect. So I'm just gonna go ahead and approve it. This right here is where that wood bench is gonna be for the drop zone. All right, so now I'm leaving the model. I have to go pick out some tile 
for the kitchen backsplash because I was supposed to already have that done. So I am at Carpetland and I have got a lot to choose from. So I kind of know what I'm looking for, I just have to find it. So I'm actually kind of liking this one here, but I don't want to be too taste specific um, because you want the model to kind of reflect a little bit of everyone's style and sometimes adding too much of a printed pattern on the backsplash in a model home um, can sometimes deter some people from buying it. So I have to try to not go with what I always want, but more so what just, you know, looks good that would appeal to most. Well, I've picked out some selections that I'm gonna take home and I'm gonna take a look at them with my other selections to make sure all the colors go together. So I'm loaded up here. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs> All right, here we go, going back to the homestead. This is where I keep all the selections sitting at all times. I like to keep it hidden so I don't feel like it's a mess in the house. <laughs> but uh, we went with this color here. This is the foggy morning, and it is more of an off-white because once you put white there. So that's the countertop color. The rusty color is the color of the pendants. And then the off-white would be the backsplash, the white is the cabinets, and the stone is the range hood. So I think that's a good combination there. Well, it is crunch time here at the homestead. Yep. Just getting some of the tiny little spots that uh, got missed last night because it got dark. So, But there's not, not a whole lot. So. Nope. And we didn't paint the top, just so you guys know. This is just all the rust that got taken care of from the uh, the Gemplers. So I almost wonder, not now, obviously, because <laughs> we got too many little things to do before the shoot, but I wonder if we shouldn't actually paint the top like a light color so that way it doesn't get too hot with the produce on it. Yeah. I can tell that uh, Jason's feeling the pressure because uh, he had to water this morning some of the stuff when he's yep. got a big list of things to do, but I had to go do selections. And I didn't yep. choose to go do selections today. I know, I know. It wasn't uh it was an to, to it was an unforeseen task that I had to do today. Yep. So we have Grandma Karen watching the girls today so we could get more done for this photo shoot coming up with Country Gardens magazine on the 20th and the 21st. So we've got a lot to do. Yep. Just trying to get everything wrapped up yep. before Tuesday. Yeah. Before Monday, ideally, because they're coming Tuesday. So. so I am headed to the back, and I am going to go trim up the strawberry beds. I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my weed whacker and clean up all of the edges on the strawberry beds. Normally, once the strawberries are done producing, I would just go ahead and mow them down and then that's it for the season. But I didn't want these to look like empty dead beds for the photo shoot, just in case they happen to be in the background somewhere. So I'm just gonna go through and clean up the edges and then that way it'll just be nice full greenery on the top of the beds. So it's actually a shame to toss these because all of this are new plants. Everywhere that there is a strawberry plant on the shoot here, that's where it gets roots, and that's how they multiply. So really, I could go ahead and plant these in a new garden and have more, but we've already got more strawberries than we could possibly handle, eat, and harvest. All right, I got the first, first cut. It's cool because these sides fold down, if you want, which is kind of a, Nifty feature. This is what holds them up. No. Is it cut too short? Nope. That's gonna look so cool. Yep. The wraps that go up All right. there. Alright, I got one side done. Now I just gotta fasten it on. One side down. Aww. Bring Keep back on going. Yeah, I know. Feels good. Aww, it does. We're bringing it to life. Mm-hmm. New 
life. It's gonna look real sleek. All right, Casey's going to finish off some more selections. That way we don't get calls when we're on vacation after the shoot. Yep. It's all done. All right, I just finished putting the last of the boards on. We're still gonna add a little bling. We're gonna get some uh, copper spray paint and we're gonna dab up the, uh, the rims with it. And I don't know if Casey wants me to put another piece of, of wood here on, on this front part. If so, I'll have uh, one more little cut to do, but uh, it's looking real nice. Colors look good. Well, I thought I was all done shoveling for the year, but looks like I got one more load of stone to get spread out back by the greenhouse here. Got all of the, uh, the hard gravel laid down. Now I got to blend in pea gravel we have everywhere else against the greenhouse. So I got four yards of stone here. Let's see how quick I can get it spread out. I'm going to get the skid steer. Now that's what I call a head start. All right, Case, Casey's back. Yeah, you like that? All right. Mm-hmm. I did pick up some malt. Oh, you did? Okay, I figured you'd pull back here for a reason. No! <laughs> well, we won't be able to show you that bling tonight. But I did steal um, some of my furniture and fill all the back with the bottle. Good. First pepper pick of the season. How is it? So sweet, Ooh. And juicy. <laughs> what kind is that? These are the lunchbox peppers, so they, they can turn color too, so they'll be like green, red, and yellow, but I can't wait anymore. Mm, and I'm really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Check this out. I'm gonna go surprise Casey. So Forrest, who uh, helped me with the uh, greenhouse putting the end on last weekend, he found this online and ordered it up so we're gonna go surprise her see what she thinks hey hon um forest drops up off for you oh my god oh, isn't that cool oh, <laughs> so, so that could go right above the doors huh I think that would be a perfect fit up there. It's got kind of the same color as the siding and the writings. Um, got similar color to the trim. It looks really cool. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome home, chairs. It's been two years. Mulch in here. It's going to go in here. working on now is the mildew on my pumpkins and um, I've already tried a, a little bit of what I'm using in our small batch and it actually helped out a lot so now I'm going to use what I'm using out in our big batch and see what happens it's going to take a while to apply but let me show you what I'm using here I'm using mildew care by safer grow it's used in organic gardening and it's a fungicide for powdery mildew. So I'm gonna show you how I mix it up and how I apply it onto the plant. And I eyeball, cause I'm pretty used to doing a lot of this stuff. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then we just go ahead and fill up with water. There are many different pumpkin varieties that you can grow that are resistant to mildew. One of the large varieties of pumpkins called Howden that we grew is not resistant. I should have known better. I mean, I, I've learned from my parents. I've seen them 
grow pumpkins for a living and they lost so much money one year from mildew taking over their crop. So that's what's happening to me right now. So not a good move on my part to be planting pumpkins that aren't mildew resistant. Um, but that's, uh, that was the chance I was willing to take because I love the Howden pumpkins. They get big and they're beautiful for carving. Um, but with mildew, you're probably wondering how do you get it? It's from water sitting on leaves and there being no wind or sun to dry it off. And what's been happening here in Wisconsin, as you guys have been seeing in some of the videos, we have been getting very cold like nights and mornings, which creates, you know, mildew. So, um, or it, it creates dew on the leaves, which then creates mildew. So a lot of nighttime wetness on the leaves and cold temperatures. Mildew on the plants doesn't happen for us usually until the end of September when the pumpkins are already set and almost full grown. But when they're happening before I even see hardly any pumpkin set, that's what worries me. That tells me that we're not going to have anything. So that's why I'm trying to do something about yeah, it. Yeah, we'll have to see, see what happens here. So I want to show you guys right here. This is what powdery mildew looks like. On these leaves here, it's just starting. So this has, you know, the little white polka dots. That's powdery mildew. And then as you continue, Jason, if you want to go over, walk in there a little bit further, Jason's going to show you a few more leaves that are really full of it. Yeah, you can see here, once it covers the leaf, it starts to kill it. And that's what it does to the whole plant then. And then the whole plant. Here's one, you know, the leaf's completely dead because Look at all the, the white mildew on it. So it just, like Casey said, when you've got dew sitting on the plants for eight hours and it's cool, it's a recipe for disaster. So I'm gonna show you how I apply it on these leaves here. So with, with the mildew care, you have to cover the leaf. That's why I said it's gonna take a long time because if you don't cover the leaf, it doesn't help the mildew or get rid of it. You know any good crop dusters? <laughs> I know. Why do we always have to do things the hard way? Yeah. Everything. The pumpkins have been a challenge every year. It's uh, always something. Yeah. It's so frustrating. But you know what? We don't have anything. We don't have anything. You know that's just that's just the cards we drew this year. Yep. So I'm we got other good things happening, it. so we right. can. Not let this bring us down. Nope. So here's the, the ray of sunshine that, uh, that we saw today coming out of the field. The first sunflower. Oh look, he's already got a, a visitor. Working hard getting his nectar. Oh wait, there's two of them. All right, so to me, this looks like this could be the next one out here that's that's going to pop. It looks like it's super close. And they look really cool, too, before they even open. Yeah, here's another one that's just pretty much taken over. Well, that, and I just saw a cucumber beetle jump onto it. So we've been battling bugs, mildew. It's a fight. It's a fight, tooth and nail, to save these pumpkins. <laughs> 